Welcome to Freya's Fairy Tales, where we believe fairy tales are both stories we enjoyed as children and something that we can achieve ourselves. Each week, we will talk to authors about their favorite fairy tales when they were kids, and their adventure to holding their very own fairy tale in their hands. At the end of each episode, we will finish off with a fairy tale or short story read as close to the original author's version as possible. I am your host, Freya Victoria. I'm an audiobook narrator that loves reading fairy tales, novels, and bringing stories to life through narration. I am also fascinated by talking to authors and learning about their why and how for creating their stories. We have included all of the links for today's author and our show in the show notes. Today is part two of two, where we are talking to Kimberly Ann about her novels. After today, you will have heard about knowing you want to write from a young age, joining groups to help you in your journey, knowing when you need to pull back and write a new story, giving yourself enough time to get everything done, finding your crew, and writing what you want to read. Canadian Spring, Logan Creek, Book 4 A bubbly city girl, a grumpy country boy, a weekend that will change their lives forever. Skylar Martin is more than happy to flee the city, leaving her past and failed engagement behind her. Off on a new adventure in Logan Creek to plan a wedding for an old friend, she hopes to do just that. What she didn't expect was encountering a grumpy bear of a mountain man on her stop for coffee. He riled her up, turned her on, and drove her crazier than any man ever had before. Just on that one stop... Dylan Thompson had his life planned out, be the mayor of his hometown Logan Creek for as long as he could, and then figure out a way to live a quiet life that is free of responsibilities to other people. After seeing how having a family could cause so much heartbreak, he swore he'd never put himself or anyone else through that. Unfortunately, Skylar and Dylan had to grin and bear their discontent towards each other on a trip to Vegas for the bachelor and bachelorette parties. Not only did they wake up in the same bed together, but also with rings on very important fingers. Refusing to divorce, will their rings be enough to hold them together? Or is not everyone meant to have a happily ever after? So now I have to ask, as an audiobook narrator, is there any mm-hmm. plans for audio in the works? Actually, yes. Um, I just announced that uh, Canadian Summer is going into audiobook. We just had the casting for it. Fine. So is it uh, with casting, are you single narrator or are you team narrating? Uh, team narrating. So there's a duel. Okay. Yeah. And so are they doing same duo doing the whole series? I, well, right now we're just doing the first book. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So... I'll cross that bridge when I get to it, I guess. So we'll see how the first one does. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll admit audio is a little bit of a scary venture for me <laughs> as an author. Um, just well, because... it's a different, like, promoting Yeah. Thing. It's a whole different game. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the little that I know from ebooks and paperback, I, I can probably do a little bit to audiobook, but I know it's totally different, but... I'm very excited for it, though. I'm excited to hear it. I'm excited to see what happens and hopefully have more after that. Fun. So you are so you said you have um, a book in your newsletter and then you're releasing a couple of anthologies. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much your whole like this year going into next year, right? Yes, I have two anthologies coming out in November and then that will be it for this year. Which is when and your then, episodes for the podcast will be airing, just so you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> amazing. Good timing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always like every time I go to like schedule an episode, I always put whatever the most recent book is, like one I read the blurb and then in, during the episode. And then I always put like the link to whatever the most recently published one is in the show notes oh, so people can go buy it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So we'll... Now, anthology, would you prefer the anthology or one of your own books? Um, I mean, it doesn't anthologies, matter, I think, anyway. are good. Well, I haven't, this will be my first actual published anthology. So okay. I don't know how it goes on the post-publishing side. Um, I'm hoping that it does well. And I'm hoping that, um, you know, I'm able to reach a bunch of readers that I hadn't been able to reach before that right. maybe find me and they like my rating. Um, but when it comes to 
the back end side, I kind of wanted to say I prefer my own books just because I can be more fluid with my deadlines. Um, right. You know, uh, when it comes to an anthology, not that I don't love the coverage for the anthologies because I do, but I have no say in it. Right. So, right. Um, and while I have my own covers for my own books in those anthologies, you know, that's not posted on the, um, like right. the it's gonna be, and things like that. Yeah. It'll be the main cover for all of them. Yeah, which I mean, I'm very thankful that the covers that I have seen for the anthologies I'm in so far, I love them. So I'm very excited for that. But yeah, that's, I mean, it's probably just a control thing. (laughs) (laughs) Might be another author tendency. but (laughs) um, Yeah, and then just with the deadlines, you know, which I mean, I totally get and I signed up for this. I'm not complaining. But yeah, when it's my own project, I could be like, well, can we push it back a week? (laughs) Right. So how did you get included in the anthology? How'd you find out about it? Um, I either had friends that were signing up for it and they sent me the um, open link for it or I found it through, uh, there's some really great Facebook groups for authors uh, if you're looking for different anthologies to join. Um, yeah, there's just a sign up that uh, you can apply to the organizers to see if you can get a spot. And I'm guessing at that point, the organizers are like, no, nah, this person's style isn't a fit for this one. Or I, I imagine that would have to happen or you'd end up with like, a weird mishmash of stories I think so yeah I mean I know there's some anthologies that have varying levels of spice and they kind of you know organize the book so that you can be like okay if you like the lower end spice you know probably the closer to the front or stop here (laughs) yeah like if you don't want to read more don't read more (laughs) um but yeah I think that they just look that you're not say writing a paranormal for a contemporary or, right. you know, um, just to make sure that everything flows, I think is more, is well, more I've, what they're looking for. I've also seen a lot of, there's a lot of anthologies that are like free or maybe I just always like, they're always running specials. Maybe, I don't know, or like 99 cents or like, they're always at least the ones that I've seen, or maybe because I always sort by price, I just only mm-hmm. see the cheap ones. Uh, but I know I've seen a lot that are like, you know, really good anthologies with a lot of, but I don't like buying, like, I like to buy whole series. And so like, mm-hmm. I don't like anthologies where it's like, oh, here's the first in book in series. And that's all yeah. you're getting. Like, I'd rather buy the like collection of all the Oh, books. 100%. <laughs> yeah, I know like some, like, I know, for my, the ones that I'm in right now, I believe the starting price will be 99 cents. So that's why you might see it is to get the most amount of sales as you can right at launch, right? Right, um, right. That's why you make it like the 99 cents. Um, I think some do free to maybe hit a list, um, like if they want it. Because I know I'm in one next year, uh, next May, the Wicked Games um, anthology, where we are specifically are trying to get on a bestseller list. So we are doing okay. everything we can in order to do that. And I believe the starting price for that will be 99 cents just so that we can be like, Hey, here's our book. It's only a dollar. (laughs) Yeah. Take a chance on us. (laughs) Now what's, if you, I I guess this is up to personal preference, but once you hit a best selling list, even if it's in an anthology, you can then say you're a best selling author, right? I can. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) if, if this works, you know, I'm hoping that it can be Kimberly Ann, you know, ex best like selling author list you know (laughs) because you know that would be amazing (laughs) I feel like there would also be a little bit of like but I didn't do it on my own (laughs) maybe a little but you know for me I'd I'd be like "Eh," maybe you feel just a teeny tiny bit like it's cheating because you didn't do it on your own (laughs) I mean it is but at the same time I mean you know we're working as a team, right? So, right. you know, I am actively pushing it. I am writing for it. I'm, you know, there with those, there's a bigger cost buy-in. So, right. you know, I, I'm equally paying for marketing and a higher end cover and, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Right. So yes and no. Right. Like I know what you're saying. Like, I mean, I no, and I'm not saying it, it is cheating. I'm not saying yeah, it is yeah. cheating at all. I'm just saying like in the back of my head, I would just have that little like, uh, <laughs> Right. I mean, like at the end of the day, would I love to have that off of a Logan Creek book? A hundred percent. You know, I also don't have the reach for that. <laughs> so, I feel um, like I don't think many authors hit it unless they are like with a big publisher with tons of publishing dollars. I don't feel like most authors in their first series hit it. Well, that's the thing is also when you're an indie author, you are 
you were it, you were everything, right? right? Like, um, so again, it all depends. I mean, you might have someone who is an indie author that might be a little more financially better off that they could throw a whole bunch of money at marketing and things. And I'm like, great for them. I'm just, I'm not there. Right. 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 So, um, you know, it's doable. It is like you said, a much harder if you're not traditionally published because you don't have that powerhouse behind you. Like you don't have that presence. You, you know, can't get into the Walmarts and the targets and the, you know, everything else. Um, at least not to the same level as you could be if you were say, um, with one of the big publishing houses. So, you know, as an indie author, it's kind of almost, um, you're kind of almost already the underdog just because you don't have that, you know, mm-hmm. like you are it. So, you know, for me, like my first two books, I didn't have the editors because I didn't have the budget. You know, I mm-hmm. chose to spend more of that money towards the covers and getting it in front of readers than I did, you know, editing, which I mean, I've now learned, you know, that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm putting it towards editors, but I mean, that's just the kind of, decisions that you have to make I find as an indie author is because you're limited in your budget you're kind of like okay where am I throwing my money like if I have a hundred dollars where can I best see that investment yeah. you know so right whereas like to a traditional publishing house they'd be like a hundred dollars just take it I don't care you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> but for me a hundred dollars is a lot more <laughs> right right so what is what you know, talking about low budgets and all that, what did you do to promote books? Well, all of the books, I guess, but like at the beginning, what were you doing to promote your book and get it out there? It was mainly just Instagram. Um, I hit Instagram hard a lot with um, just putting out different graphics, learning what kind of graphics work. Um, Even just playing around with trying to make my own graphics to see uh, which got the best engagement. Um, So that worked a lot. Um, Facebook, not so much for me, um, promo wise, but it's really great for me to be able to connect with other readers, mm-hmm. connect with writers. Um, so it's really great that way. But for me, it's a hundred percent, uh, Instagram and Facebook. I'm attempting to learn TikTok. I am not that good at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll admit, I also don't like taking videos of myself. So it <laughs> also does not help a lot. Um, but I'm, I'm trying because I know book talk is, um, can be a very helpful tool for authors. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to get there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I know that's how you found me because you saw my video Mm -hmm. about like, Hey, I need, you know, femme audio, which they're actually doing another event here in a couple of weeks that I can't participate in because my house foundation is being repaired during that day. Oh no! (laughs) I'm like, I gotta, I gotta sit this one out, but I'll be in the next one. Uh, Yeah. I saw there was another one. That's exciting. I was trying to think, oh, who else can I put in there? <laughs> <laughs> well, and then they're like, oh, it's fine. You can just record them ahead of time. I'm like, uh, no, you don't understand. I have to take three days off, which means all the days leading up to that, I have to like cram in as much as I can because mm. I have to take three days off that I'm supposed to be recording. <laughs> right. So, like, uh... <laughs> I know. And, see, that's just when life gets in the way, right? <laughs> now, the last one I did pre-record. I had I had some that I did the day of, but for the most part, I had pre-recorded the thirty-something videos that I did that day, and then I just mm-hmm. dropped them. I think I dropped like for an hour or something all day long. Like I was constantly like, stop recording whatever audiobook I was working on, post four videos, go back. Yeah, right. <laughs> So many. There were so many videos. And I did not realize when I posted that video, like, like, call out, calling authors, like, contact me, whatever. I didn't realize that, like, my response was ridiculously higher than most other people. Um, So, like, I'm doing it. And some people are like, oh, I did, like, five. And I'm like, five? (laughs) (laughs) I'm over here. And they're like, well, you could pass them off. I'm like, except I didn't ask anybody if it was okay to pass it off. So, like... (laughs) I'm like, no, we'll, we'll get it all done. And I did. I did get it all done. You did great. I know. I know that every time I logged on that day, I think I, I saw one of your videos. It was great. Yeah, so many. So many videos. Yeah. <laughs> well, now I've learned that TikTok has a scheduler if you go on their website. So 
in the future, you may be able to do that. Yes. Well, and it wasn't too bad because I, I honestly, while I'm narrating, I try to stop like once an hour to like walk around anyways, um, oh, good. Yeah, which is fine. why I had to like, I, I told you I had to change my chair. I typically sit on a kneeling chair. Um, but my interview earlier went too long, and so my knee is bothering me. So I had oh. to switch switch to a normal chair that's not on my knee. <laughs> but so I typically try to like get up and walk around just so I'm not you know sitting stationary all day long. Um, that's good. So it did work out because it would be you know I'd be on a break between chapters and I would get them posted. Um, it was just a lot. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So you are learning new social medias. You are mm-hmm. improving your books with each new book. Um, what other, because those are pretty good tips for any author in general. Um, what other tips, tricks, anything do you have for maybe a new author or someone trying to figure out, you know, something's not working, need to fix something kind of thing? Um, I would definitely say... Um try to find other writers that write similar to you um, and lean on them because it's the support in the book community is amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, the friends that I've made have become some of my best friends, uh, which is kind of funny if you think about it, because with the power of the internet, you know, I have best friends all over the world that I've never Mm -hmm. met, but probably some, some of them know me better than my friends in real life because I talk to them every day on the internet. Right, right. Um, uh, and because they're also writers, I can talk to them about things that I can't talk to all my other friends about, right? Right. So um, definitely find your crew. Like um, if you write paranormal, find other paranormal writers, right? If you write contemporary, find those people. Um, have them read your things. Have them like bounce ideas off of them. Ask them questions. You know, even if they're the same level as you and you're learning at the same time, it's still amazing to have someone go through that journey with you and to learn with you at the same time. And chances are they find things that you don't know and you know mm-hmm. things that they don't know. And, you know, you can help each other out that way. Well, and different um, people retain different things in different ways as exactly. well. Yeah. Like um, the my friend that I wrote the uh, the, the shared character with, Monique, I talk to her every day and she is a whiz at remembering things when it comes to marketing. Whereas for me, they go way over my head. So like, <laughs> you know, I'll You're probably like, ask I need the step by step version. Right? <laughs> and I'll be like, what did you say about this promo? And I know I asked you five times, but thankfully she's very patient with me. So, <laughs> you know, I get to um, the point where like, if you ask me too many times, I'm like, here's a list. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> You know what? We've we've joked about making lists and we're starting to get better at spreadsheets that we share, but we both just like have the attention span of like a gnat. So <laughs> sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. <laughs> but I just are... got to where for author edits on audiobooks, I will make a Google Doc and share it with them so that they can update like, hey, at, in this chapter, at this timestamp, you know, this is what's wrong with it. And then I can you know see it as they update it to edit Oh, um, I just started doing I did that with one author because he was trying to like message me, but we would talk so much on Facebook Messenger that like the fixes would get lost. <laughs> so yeah, I'm finally like, too. I'm like, we need we need a place that we're not going to be chatting back and forth <laughs> that, <laughs> that these won't get lost. A hundred percent shared drives are the way to go. <laughs> Find. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I would definitely recommend find your people. Um Find um, some beta readers that you trust that know read in your genre that can give you some honest feedback and, Mm -hmm. you know, about your your writing to let you know if there's any plot holes, any inconsistencies, anything that might throw a reader off, anything like that. Um, And then, yeah, just keep going because there are going to be times that you're like, why do I do this? Like, I can't do this anymore. Um, For me, it's usually when I'm close to the end of a book. I don't know if it's because all of a sudden my characters are like, oh, we're near the end. I'm just going to drag this out and let my story go for as long as humanly possible. But I get to the point where I'm I'm not done yet. Yeah, they do. Literally, like, it's like they're like just making it go like molasses. But, you know, and I'm just like, okay, this book is just not getting published. Right. I think. I think just keep a thousand just pages keep going. later. Right? Well, for me, they just stop talking. 
they're like, oh, well, you're going to finish this. Well, I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, there's that too. <laughs> Cliffhanger. Yeah, it's like, exactly. <laughs> For the readers and the author, which is always fun. Right? <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's just what I would would recommend is just find your people and keep going. So how did you find, you covered why you need beta readers. How did you find, yeah. as a new author, how did you find your beta readers? Um, a lot of them, it's a trial and error, I'll be honest. I'm still learning sometimes. Um, sometimes there are other authors that I trust that maybe have critiqued for me in the past or something like that. Um, or just other authors that have read my things and really liked my stories. And I'm like, Hey, I have a new story. What do you think about this before I send it off to my editor? Um, you know, just, I would try to find those people that you connect with and that, you know, will give you an honest opinion, Mm -hmm. obviously without hurting your feelings or anything like that. Like don't be me, but you know, to be be honest about things that need to be changed. Um, if you're a new author, there are Facebook groups where you can find beta readers. Uh, maybe if you don't have that networking of a whole bunch of other authors, there are mm-hmm. a ton of groups that are so supportive and will have a ton of people happy to read your things and give you feedback on it. So I'd probably start there. Okay. Yeah, that's I've when I ask that question to anyone that mentions beta readers, I've gotten, well, I got some on Fiverr or (laughs) social media or (laughs) like just different answers every time. It's hard. I mean, I personally have never paid for a beta beta reader before. Um, but, uh, there are some people that do and it's perfectly fine. I just, I've never tried the Fiverr or anything like that before. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I just, yeah, I would probably start with the the groups. And it is it is hit and miss. You know, sometimes some, a beta reader reads your books and you find that maybe your book just wasn't for them. And right. you have to take that with a grain of salt too. You know, after you usually cry a little bit <laughs> and you go, okay, well, yeah. maybe my book's just not for them. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, it, it can be it can be hard and it can be a lot of trial and error. But when you get like a good core beta reader set, it's very helpful. I was like, your writing style is not going to change a whole lot. So you can use, um, you know, the same beta readers. Like I've had same with like reviews. I've had reviews on audiobooks recently and I'll have one that's super brutal. And then another one that's like, oh, my gosh, I loved this. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, you can't improve on conflicting opinions. <laughs> so. Exactly. And it's all comes down to a preference, too. Right. Like, right. You know, I some maybe some people like I've had people give me a bad review because I write in third person. <laughs> So, you know, like, yeah, it all depends on somebody's preference. preference. Yeah. And you can't control someone. Now, in theory, you have, you know, in books, there's typically the sample that you can read ahead of time to see if it's your mm-hmm. style before you buy it and don't like the whole thing. Um, with yeah. audiobooks, there's like a three to five minute clip that in theory you can listen to to see if you like mm-hmm. the style before you pay for the book um but yeah. no no one no one actually reads them or listens to them or most people don't so <laughs> yeah I'll admit I don't usually read the samples of books but <laughs> I don't um, either but I'm I also not you know, try not to read yeah right <laughs> but I also try not to leave a review about things that are my personal preference on things yeah yeah that's or if I am leaving a review, it's not going to be brutal. It's going to mm-hmm. be, you know, this is because I don't think that you should only leave five star. Like you should only leave reviews when you like the book. I yeah. honestly just forget to review half the time. Um, but like be honest about it because something that you don't like might be something someone else loves and something mm-hmm. you don't like may be something that someone else also doesn't like. And so they're not going to you know waste their money and be mad about a book that they didn't like because they didn't see your review or whatever exactly yeah (laughs) yeah I mean and as an author and I'm sure as a as a voice um, narrator too that you're just kind of like you know you take the emotional hit and then you try to forget about it and realize that you're not you maybe you're just not their cup of tea and that's okay because then you know you find the people that you are their cup of tea (laughs) What I find slightly frustrating is usually the only narrators. Now, there are probably let me say this first and then I'll say um, typically it's the female narrators that are going to get more of the I didn't like their voice as opposed Mm -hmm. to male narrators. (laughs) Typically, the male narrators (laughs) are like, they're amazing. I loved it, whatever. And females, it's like, I hated it or I loved it. Like there is no 
I feel like men get the easier end of the review stick, and it may just be I've never come across one that has bad reviews, but... To be honest, it's the same with characters I've found with romance novels, because, you know, I have people being like, oh, you know, I really love Dylan. And I'm like, oh, okay, what about Skylar? They're like, "Eh, yeah. And I'll be like, okay. You know, or in my Canadian fall, I've heard a lot of like, Travis is my favorite. And I'm like, well, what did you think about Lila? Oh, I wanted to smack her. I'm like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, well. I mean, to be fair, I wanted to smack her a couple times too while I was writing it, but. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, does it really have to go like this? (laughs) I'm like, but yay, you like Travis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least that that's half of the couple right there. <laughs> there you go. I'm batting 50. I'm okay. <laughs> as long as they're not bru- brutal about it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, with Lila, I can kind of understand because she's a bit of a firecracker. But <laughs> yeah, I always just kind of laugh when I get those. They're like, oh, Travis is my new book boyfriend. But oh, that Lila. <laughs> <laughs> So what is, so you're playing with TikTok. Have you figured out what works or hasn't worked yet? Now, I feel like they just no. reset the algorithm. So I... They reset the algorithm. I switched over to a business account now because I didn't want to worry about all the licensing with music and stuff like that. Yeah. Because um, that's a big issue right now. Um, and I find that now it's harder because you now don't have access to all of the trending music, basically. Um you know, I'm not great on making original content. <laughs> so I find that I get kind of stuck at like this 200 view area. Mm-hmm. Same. But then I did. A, yeah. But then I did a book opening like a I bought some books off of book outlet. And so I'm like, oh, well, I'll do like a bo- unboxing video or whatever. Right. And I get like 500 views, which I know for like other people is not a big deal. But I'm like, what happened? <laughs> you know? My like first video my that got more than like a hundred views was a video of me talking about my fan in my booth. You know, but maybe for, everybody needed that fan. Yeah, I mean, for people in, you know, when you are in a enclosed space that has no mm-hmm. airflow, something that is quiet, that's not going to pick up on the mic very much, is very important for moving mm-hmm. air around so you don't die. So- <laughs> So everybody was like, oh, my God, where can I get it? <laughs> well, there like, you of go. Of course, it would be this silly, like, 15-second video of me like, this fan is amazing. <laughs> that would do the best. <laughs> that and then the author call-out for, I got, like, over a 1,000 views for that author call-out video. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it was showing off everybody else's books. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we we all eventually, you know, figure out, well, hopefully eventually figure out what works for us and just in time for the algorithm to change again. And then you're like, why am I only getting five views when I usually get a hundred or 200 or whatever? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, TikTok is a whole different game that I have not figured out. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I feel like everybody else, because I just had the same thing happen with Instagram. So I think they're changing their stuff too. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, can we just like... I don't know. And then I see some people talk about, oh, they just changed it. And here's how they've changed it. And I'm like, but did they actually say that? Or are you just making stuff up? (laughs) Right. Yeah. I've heard that Facebook and Instagram are now moving towards a more real video based system. And I'm like, please don't. (laughs) (laughs) I just, yeah, I'll do the, I'll do the graphics all day long. Don't make me do videos. (laughs) I just post the same videos across them. I'm lazy. Oh, I do the same thing. Yeah. I'm like, why am I going to put a bunch of effort into doing different things for every platform? Like, (laughs) yeah, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, no, I hear you on that. (laughs) All right. So what is, well, we've already talked about what's coming next. Do you have Mm -hmm. any final tips or advice or anything that maybe we haven't talked about or um, any final, like, get off your butt and write your book stuff (laughs) (laughs) I don't know because I feel like sometimes I need that same get off your butt and write your book stuff (laughs) Um, new job for your PA (laughs) right she does that too she's like so how's that book coming along I'm like oh (laughs) (laughs) she sent me a list yesterday of all my dates that I need to have things to her and I'm like oh yeah I'm just gonna have a little panic attack over here don't mind me (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think yeah just what I said like honestly just finding your people and just 
keep going. And um, at the end of the day, just, you know, you can write to market, you can write, you know, what you think people want to read. But my recommendation is just to read, to write what you want to read. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, don't worry too much about, well, this trope is really popular right now, because chances are by the time you write it, you get it marketed, it's going to be something different. Right. Um, So trust your characters, trust your instincts. um, You know, sometimes characters do know best and you have to trust them. And I know that sounds insane, but (laughs) the amount of times that I've tried to push a plot on a character and they're like, no, (laughs) no. (laughs) Well, I mean, and the reality is, no. Everything comes back around. So if you write some trope now that mm-hmm. you want to write, if that's not the popular one right now, in five years, it might be. And you know what? Your book's already done and out there. Right. How many authors now are getting a revival for books that were released years ago? Like, mm-hmm. you know, Colin Hoover, her book was released, what, like three years ago? Um, Amy Dawes, like her blindsided, I think, was a couple of years ago. And then, you know, somebody picked it up on Book Talk and all of a sudden it's like hitting bestseller lists all over the place again, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you always have like your tropes that are pretty much always going to stay the same, you know, like um, small town, brothers, best friends, enemy to lovers, that kind of stuff, right? But um, yeah, I mean, just honestly, just write what you want to read because, you know, if you don't like it, the readers are going to know that, right? right. Like they're going to be able to feel that you you know, didn't have the same vibe, maybe. So, you know, just listen yes, to your whole gut. text sounds bored <laughs> would be your, yeah. your review. It does. <laughs> really, it does. Because if you don't have your heart in it, they will tell. So, you know, that's just what my, my advice is anyway. <laughs> thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank you too. And I will see you around. You better start promoting yourself on TikTok more, something, <laughs> even if it's page flips. Get out there. I, I will try. I did a page flip yesterday, so I'll Yay! try to keep up with that. <laughs> All right. Well, I will see you around Instagram and TikTok. <laughs> Sounds good. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye. Kimberly liked the story of Sleeping Beauty growing up. Sleeping Beauty, or Little Briar Rose, also titled in English as The Sleeping Beauty in the Woods, is a classic fairy tale about a princess who is cursed to sleep for a hundred years by an evil fairy, to be awakened by a handsome prince at the end of them. The good fairy, realizing that the princess would be frightened if alone when she awakens, uses her wand to put every living person and animal in the palace asleep, to awaken when the princess does. The earliest known version of the story is found in the narrative Purse Forest, composed between 1330 and 1344. The tale was first published by Gian Battista Basile in his collection of tales titled The Pentamarone, published posthumously in 1634. Basile's version was later adapted and published by Charles Perrault in Historis au Contes du Temps Passé in 1697. The version that was later collected and printed by the Brothers Grimm was an orally transmitted version of the literary tale published by Perrault. The Arne Thompson classification system for folktales classifies Sleeping Beauty as being a 410 tale type, meaning it includes a princess who is forced into an enchanted sleep and is later awakened, reversing the magic placed upon her. The story has been adapted many times throughout history and has continued to be retold by modern storytellers throughout various media. Today we'll be reading The Petrified Mansion. This story has been noted to be similar to the original Sleeping Beauty story and comes from India. Don't forget, we're reading Les Mortes d'Arthur, the story of King Arthur and of his noble knights of the Round Table on our Patreon. You can find the link in the show notes. The Petrified Mansion Once upon a time, there was a prince who set out on his travels into foreign countries, alone, without taking with him any valuables. His sword was his only companion. He crossed mountains, seas, and rivers, and at length came to a grand mansion. He entered it, and great was his surprise to find petrified forms of men and animals in all the apartments through which he passed— Even the weapons in the armory were not exceptions. There was, in one of the halls, a stone statue dressed in royal splendor, surrounded by other statues gorgeously equipped. 
The lonely house greatly frightened the prince, but just as he was on the point of quitting it, he happened to notice an open door. Passing through it, he reached the presence of a very beautiful damsel reposing on a cot, bed of gold, and surrounded by lotuses of the same metal. She lay quite motionless and was apparently dead. There was not the softest breath perceptible in her. The prince was enamored of her beauty and sat with his eyes fixed upon her, but one day he happened to notice a stick of gold near the girl's pillow. He took it up and was turning it round and round for inspection, when it suddenly touched her forehead and instantly she started up, fully conscious. The whole house resounded with the clamor of human tongues, the clanking of arms, the songs of birds, and the sounds of domestic animals. It was full of life and joy. Heralds made proclamations, ministers speechified in the courtroom, and the king engaged himself in the discharge of his royal duties. The prince was struck speechless with wonder, and the princess was equally astonished. The servants entered the room, and finding a prince-like youth seated by their master's daughter, hastened to the king with the intelligence. He hurried to the spot and seeing the prince, asked him who he was. The prince told him, and the royal family with all the other inmates of the palace acclaimed him as their deliverer. They said that the touch of a silver stick had petrified them all, and that their revival was the result of his having touched the princess with a stick of gold. In recognition of the very great service he had rendered them, the prince was rewarded with the princess's hand, and great were the rejoicings on the joyous occasion. Meanwhile, in his own home, his parents mourned for the prince as the years passed and he did not return. The queen had taken to her bed, and the king had become blind with weeping. They were disconsolate and courted death as the only termination of their great grief. The whole kingdom was overcast with sadness, which was, however, ultimately removed, when one day the long-lost prince appeared with his bride— Joyous acclamations rent the air, and the royal couple, being informed of the return of their dear son, hastened out to the gate and embraced him and the princess. At the touch of the stick of gold, the king regained his sight, and the queen her health, and they lived for years in the enjoyment of great happiness. At length, leaving the throne to his son, the king with the queen retired to spend a secluded and godly life in the depths of the forest." Thank you for joining Freya's Fairy Tales. Be sure to come back next week to hear Claudia's journey to holding her own fairy tale in her hands and to hear one of her favorite fairy tales.